Hello, my TBR for February is a little unconventional. So I had a bit of a rough reading month in January and just a rough January in general. My kid's school was closed for two weeks because of um, an outbreak, not really an outbreak, but a case. And I didn't get a lot of writing, reading, filming done in the entire month because it was back to like kids home all the time. So I did read some things that I liked, but I also got a bunch of book slumps. And so for February, I'm going to mood read the whole month. I'm only going to read what I feel like it. And that's that. So my February wrap up might be like 15 romance novels or some mysteries or I don't know. But I put together all the books I own that I'm going to try to pick from. There's a couple books that I, a couple like series that I read on my Kindle that I um, haven't purchased yet, but will if I decide to read them this month. So those are the only ones I don't have. And there's one library book I might go get. So let's get started with my books I may or may not read in February. The first one I most likely will read because I got it from the library already, and it's The Quiet American by Graham Greene. Um, I grabbed this from the library two weeks ago when I was there, and I can't really see myself returning it. I'm so sorry. There's a snowplow going by. I really wanted to read this one for a long time, so I think I am going to start it. It's also a very short book, and my brain has definitely been handling short books better than long books lately, so I think this will be a good February read for me. The next classic that I might read in February is Murder on the Orient Express. I'm kind of wavering back and forth whether or not I actually want to read it this month. I think because it's wintry, I'm feeling like I need to read it before we get to spring, which for us here, it doesn't, spring doesn't really come till April, so I can read it in March. So I might read the Orient Express. We'll see. The other mystery I have on my TBR list is The Other Mother by Carol Goodman. Um, I've talked a lot about how I love Carol Goodman. This is one of her backlists that I didn't read. I'm assuming it came out when I had a brand new baby, which I had a brand new baby a lot of years. Yes, it did. It came out when I had brand new baby twins, so that's why I didn't read this one. But um, I am excited to read it. I know it's like about a new mom kind of losing her identity and then someone kind of like taking her identity. Um, so I am looking forward to that. That sounds creepy and wonderful, but also something like I probably shouldn't have read when I had brand new baby twins. <laughs> But I do love Carol Goodman, so here's another one. She also, I just saw that she has a new book coming out in July that I can't wait to read and sounds super creepy. It like takes place in the future. I can't wait. I, I'll do a whole video on that when I get it. The next book on my maybe TBR is The Book of Longings by Sue Kidd. I actually put this on my January TBR and didn't get a chance to get to it. And I am actually really excited to read this one and I think I will really like it a lot. Um, it is a like historical reimagining if Jesus was married to a feminist woman, which is like totally my kind of book. So I am looking forward to that. I'll also hopefully read whatever book of the month I pick for February, which the list isn't out yet, so I'm not sure yet what I'm going to get or if I'm going to get anything. I did get three books last month, so I might take February off if nothing is like really grabbing my attention. Next, I have this, A Song of Flight by Juliette Merlier. Juliette Merlier is my favorite author, and you'll be probably shocked to know that I don't usually read her books as soon as they come out. Um, I usually wait a couple months mainly because I always like, this is a weird thing to say, especially because this is the last in a series. I always kind of pick up one of her books worried that it's going to be the last one. I know that's like a weird fear, but I always think like, what if she finished this series and she decides she doesn't want to write anymore? So I always kind of like save the books so I can savor them. I also tend to read her books in a really weird fashion. So a lot of times if I love a book, I'll read it in like two days and just like sit in a corner and get completely immersed in it. But for her books, I usually only let myself read one chapter a day to like really stretch them out. So we'll see. The, her books are pretty long, so that would take me probably about a month. Yeah, there's 38 chapters in this, so I'd probably not read one chapter a day, but you know, two chapters a day to really, really stretch it out and enjoy it. Um, I talked about the um, second book in this series, which is called A Dance with Fate in my best fantasy of 2021 video. And um, this is the conclusion. So we'll see if Levin and um, Brock and Dow, how their lives turn out. And I'm looking forward to it. I, 
I'm always a little sad when the first series ends because you do spend a lot of time with these characters and feel like you really get to know them. I'm considering rereading her Seven Water series this year because I love that one the best. So maybe that's something to, get, to look forward to once I'm done with this one. Okay, so the next book I'm really excited to read, but I don't know if February is the right time to read it. And I'll go into that as to why. And it's The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Um, I read Circe in 2021 and it was the best book I read all year I know it came out a few years ago and I was late to the party but I know I really want to read a song of Achilles or the song of Achilles I am not sure if I want to save this for the summer and I'll explain why I tend to read my favorite books in the summer there's something about like sitting outside and reading for me that just is like the optimal reading experience I know some people feel like wrapped up in a blanket when it's snowing outside or you're sitting by the fire or like it's autumn and the it's rainy or whatever, that those are your opt optimal reading times. Mine is really like sitting outside in the sun, just pouring through a book. So part of me wants to wait until June, but also I don't know if I can wait until June. That's like really far away, especially now that I have it in my possession. I do really wanna read it. Oh God, the first paragraph is so good. What if I just like stopped doing this video and sat here and just read the first 50 pages? Oh, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna read this in February. Okay, all the rest of the books on my TBR are romance. And I do find in February, I read a lot of romance. So I'm not necessarily like into Valentine's Day, but I do find romance is super comforting to read when the weather's really terrible and it's like pretty gray and dark and snowy here in February. So I have a lot of romance on this list and my February wrap up might be all romance. The first one is When a Scott Ties the Knot by Tessa Dare. I really love Tessa Dare. So this is the third book in um, her, I think it's called Castles Ever After series. It is, Castles Ever After series. I have the first two, but I gave them to my sister during the pandemic when you like really couldn't go to bookstores and stuff. We used to just like leave bags of romance novels on each other's porches which was so fun. And um, she still has the two. She hasn't given them back to me yet. She read them and loved them. Each heroine in this series has like a connection to a castle and that's where she meets the hero. Um, I don't know a ton about this one. I know that the heroine like made up a fiance and just like made a random name and was like writing this man letters, but he turned out he existed. And now he's like back from war, I think. And they're like engaged. I can't wait. Tessa Dare is really funny. So if you want to read a historical that has like a little bit more of like a modern sense of humor, she's a great author for that. The last four, I don't have physical copies of, so I'll put up pictures for you. So I really wanna read the last two books in the Highland Magic series by Kerrigan Byrne. They are Highland Witch and Highland Warrior. Um, if you watch my December wrap up, I read four in that series at the end of the month. And I really like those. They're short, they're like, I think they're like 100 pages. So they're a really nice read just like if you, at seven o'clock at night decide you want to read a book before you go to bed they're like you read the whole thing in one night so i really like those i really want to read those two this month and i think i probably will the next romance novel i might read in february is devil in disguise by lisa claypass um again she's another author that like i've read almost everything she's written i haven't read all her contemporary but i've read I think every single historical fiction she's written, or historical romance she's written besides this one. But it came out a while ago and I just didn't buy it. My sister, who I trade romance novels with, owns it and I have been asking her for it and she keeps forgetting to bring it whenever she's, we don't live close together, but whenever she's like around here, she keeps forgetting to bring it for me. <laughs> so maybe after I finish, when a Scott ties the knot, I can tell her we can trade and she'll bring it to me. I feel... It's weird, I don't really wanna buy a book I know my sister owns because we tend to just like share our romance novels, so I am waiting till she gives it to me. And the last romance novel I might read in February is On the Way to the Wedding, which is um, by Julia Quinn. It's the last Bridgerton book. So I've read the first seven, yes, I've read the first seven Bridgerton books and I spaced it out over about the past two years, I think, because I think I read the first one before the pandemic. Ugh. 
But um, I definitely have like a varying opinion on the books and like some of them I really like and some of them I don't like at all. And the seventh book I like really didn't like. It was probably my least favorite in the series. So I've kind of been dragging my heels as to whether or not I'm going to read the eighth. I know a lot of people do like the eighth book. So I feel like also I can't, I'm not going to read seven out of eight books and not finish the series. So I feel like I should read that. Also, the new season of Bridgerton is coming out in like less than two months. So I maybe want to dive back into the Bridgerton world for a little while. Also, public, what is it called? Public service announcement. Anthony's book in the Bridgerton series is my favorite book by far. It's so good. I can't wait for this season of Bridgerton. It's going to be fantastic. So that is my February TBR. We'll see what I end up reading. We're going to do only mood reads. So I'm in the middle of a book right now that I am going to try to finish before February starts so that I'm not like reading a book when the month starts. I'm going to try to finish it so then it's just mood reading the whole time. Nothing else. I would love it if on whatever, like March 2nd or 3rd when I post my February wrap up, if I'm like, well, I actually only read the entirety of Ice Planet Barbarians or something like I went like really down a rabbit hole with the series. That's probably not going to happen because I I own all these books that I want to read that are not Ice Planet Barbarians. I hope you have a great February TBR. And if you don't, I hope you have a great February of mood reading because there is something wonderful about mood reading, which I don't do very often. I tend to be a little bit like planned with my reading and I shouldn't. I should let myself just pick random stuff I feel like reading the day of. I hope you are in the middle of a good book, about to start reading a good book, or about to start writing a great book. See you soon. Thank you.